With me today are Cameron Brooks, Vice President, Tendril, Charles Dickerson, Vice President, Customer Care with PHI, and Ron Bins, former chair of the Colorado Public Utility Commission. Welcome to all of you. You don't ever want to overpromise, but you don't want to promise too far in advance of when the actual value propositions are going to be available. Uh, the reality of it is, is that the meters have to be installed, communications infrastructure has to be put in place, either the communications infrastructure first and the meter second or vice versa, it doesn't matter. And then you have to worry about back office programming and systems that's going to be able to take that data and, and use that technology so that that information can be provided to customers in a meaningful way. There's some things that can happen immediately, and for the things that can happen immediately, I think it's very important to begin to message those benefits immediately. But in my opinion, to try to talk about all of the benefits, and I think both of the gentlemen said it, because some of the benefits we don't even realize yet, I don't think we should try to boil, that, boil the ocean, so to speak, in that regard. I think it's, it is sufficient to say that it is a realistic expectation that as customers begin to understand better how to use energy, they can lower their energy costs and it's gonna have societal benefits. One of which is in those markets where the marginal units set the clearing price, you'll be able to have less efficient units removed from the, 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 the dispatch cycle because as people flatten the demand curve, you won't have as much need for energy at the same period of time. So peak demand shaving is extremely important. For people who are concerned about the environment, if you are running less efficient units, and you are having less of a negative impact on carbon footprint. Some things, again, can be measured soon. Some things we should wait in time, is my opinion. We've been talking about customer benefits of this, this sort of inside the home. There's another type of customer benefit, and I alluded to this a minute ago. One of the things that Smart Grid does, it makes the utility more aware of its own system so that it can prevent outages before they occur. And more importantly than that, perhaps, is they can send out the right amount of power, not too much. And if they stop sending out too much, and what I mean by that is voltage levels on circuits. Now, this is all uh, technical stuff, but what it boils down to is that Smart Grid is going to allow utilities to provide uh, services at lower cost. Now, rates are probably going to go up for a lot of other reasons. Don't get me wrong, I'm not promising reduced bills forever. You'll be glad to hear that. <laughs> but but it's, it's actually the fact that um, experiments that we've seen now around the country show that the utilities are saving operation money. And that goes back to everybody, whether you're an active participant in smart grid or not. So there's societal benefits to this that everybody's going to share in one way or the other, even if you don't personally get involved at your end, although the benefits there will be even greater if you do. You started off your question asking about the possibility that some demographic groups uh, may be at a disadvantage. Uh, that notion may not necessarily hold. As a matter of fact, we conducted a study, a pilot in Washington, D.C., called Palestine's D.C., uh, that went across principally three different rate classes, uh, and it covered both low-income and traditional or non-low-income customers. And the results of the study was that all groups were able to save money if they were given information about price signals and when was the appropriate time to use electricity and the appropriate time to shave back their usage. So I don't think any group by definition of a demographic is going to be disadvantaged. I think as Ron said, all groups can possibly benefit or will possibly benefit. You know, the old saying, you know, the tide raises the entire ship. I think some people will be raised more depending on how much input they want or how much involvement they want to have. But I don't necessarily see that there's going to be uh, a reason for anybody to be disadvantaged. I'd like to thank our panel. Uh, we're out of time here, but on behalf of the Institute for Electric Efficiency, I think we've had a great discussion today about smart grid technology. Cameron, Charles, Ron, thank you again. We look forward to a very bright future.